Mike Schmitz of ESPN. We're here with James Wiseman, a potential number one pick. Uh, James, it's, it's been kind of an untraditional pre-draft process so far, and, and yeah. I know for you with the shortened season, you know, you've, you've had a lot of time on your hands to work out and, and improve your game. I guess what have you? What have the last few weeks, uh, month or so, been for you? Just trying to you know stay ready for the next level. Uh, first of all, I like thank God just for bringing me throughout this process. But um, other than that, I've just been training for four months, just training on my weaknesses, just working on everything, all aspects of my game. And just uh, as I've been training, we've been using like NBA concepts, like coming off a floppy screen, just doing different stuff like that to get you prepared for the next level. Sure, and, and so we've been watching you for a long time, you know, since USA Basketball back in the day, Hoop yeah. Summit, Jordan Brand, all that, uh, but, you know, I think the casual fan maybe has only seen you play three collegiate games. For people yeah. watching this who maybe don't know much about you as a player, how would you describe your, your game, and what do you think you can bring to the next level? I'd say I'm a very agile big. I can run the floor. I can stretch the floor out um, 15 feet out. Um, I can shoot the mid-range. Um, I'm working on my three-point shot right now, but it's getting better every day. Um, I'm a great post, a post interior player, but um, my biggest strength is really the defensive end, being able to be a rim protector, block shots, and just playing my role. Yeah, and we'll, we'll definitely dive into some of that here, and we're going to go through uh, you know, the offensive end, the defensive end, rebounding, kind of all aspects of your game. And, and so I guess it was a shortened season, but how would you describe the, the three games that you did play? How do you think you fared? Um, it was a great experience. I feel that I played against a lot of great players. Um, I feel that I was able to test my game up towards theirs, but I feel that I had a great three games so far, um, even though all the hysteria happened. But I feel that I still played good and I showed my potential. Yeah, and kind of diving in here, I think the main intrigue with you is clearly your, your physical profile. Like, yeah. I tell people if you were to build an NBA big in a lab, it would look like you, yeah. you know, 7-1. Yeah. 250 long, obviously you know the measurables, uh, but you just don't find guys your size who can move the way you do, and, and your rim running is, is really elite, uh, so this play here kind of exemplifies that, I think if, if for any young big watching, this is textbook, how to run the floor, right, it's effort, it's your agility, you're constantly looking back at the point guard, give him a target, and then the big mm -hmm. finish above the rim, uh, and I love this as well, okay, in the McDonald's game, do you remember this play yeah. at all? Yeah, I remember. What happens? Um, Isaiah Stewart was posting up. Uh, he's a really great player, uh, yeah. very strong. But uh, I was able to use um, my strength against him, and I was able to um, just use my strength and uh, make sure that I can be able to guard the basket. And so then, that was like one of my best defensive plays yet. And we'll get into that, the defensive side. But I love how you sprint ahead here, and look at that. Big target, two feet in the paint, low, doing your work early, and then the decisive move here. Uh, that's perfect. You know, that every coach is, is going to love that if you play that way. Um, and now this, though, we've seen you push a little bit in the open court. Yeah. Maybe that's not going to be a big part of your game early on in your career in the NBA, but uh, take me through this play. Um, I've been able to basically control the ball in my hands a lot, especially when I was younger. I used to drill the ball a lot. So, like, I really have that in my game. I just – never show it because I'm always running the floor and just playing my role, but I can most definitely do that. I'm, I'm very capable. Yeah, and seven one two fifty. look at that, splitting the double team, and then the agility yeah. here with kind of the same foot, same hand finish with the touch, <laughs> uh, that's big time. And, and, yeah. and, and then that spills kind of over into your finishing in the half court. Yeah. You know, I think you <laughs> shot 85% at the rim uh, this season in those three games. What makes you such an effective finisher? Um, just using my length. Um, I feel really just using my size and just like using my speed and uh, athleticism to my advantage. That is going to push me over the hump. So really just using my length and just using it to, using it to my great advantage. Yeah, and you're a guy who can space the floor vertically as a lob catcher and then potentially mm -hmm. down the road also as a shooter. Uh, it's yeah. not easy to find guys like that. Uh, and I think it starts with setting hard screens, and, and that's an area where you've improved a lot. Uh, I was watching some of your earlier high school film, and you didn't see that as much. Has that no, been no, an emphasis no. for you? Yeah, because um, Coach P and uh, Coach Top and uh, Coach Mike Miller, they taught me a lot about the game of basketball just in that short time that I was there. But uh, I feel that uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge so far. So really just setting hard screens and actually rolling to the basket hard can really create spacing for my other teammates, but also give me an open look as well. Yeah, and I would say you're a point guard's dream just because even that, not a great pass, you're able to cock it behind your head and, and slam it home. And then here, another hard screen. And that weak side tagging defender – uh, I think they're going to be scared of you rolling down the lane if you're coming hard, you know, because mm -hmm. you can finish above the rim like that. Uh, and then the finesse also. Um, do you remember this play at all? Yeah, I remember this play. I did. What happens? 
Um, at this point, really, I was just um, checking my surroundings, having self awareness, and then um, I seen his um, his basically like his leg go up. So basically, I was able to go to the left and go to my strong hand, and I was able to finish. And that's just great mm-hmm. extension, great touch. Mm-hmm. Um, really impressive finesse. Now, I would say the one, maybe one of the things where you can improve is just constantly going to embrace contact uh, yeah. and, and really going through guys. You remember this play? Yeah. I know you bobbled the ball a little bit, but walk me through this one and maybe some what you would have done differently. This play, um, I wanted to screen um, Lester's man so they uh, it could be like a decoy so I can get to the basket. But I should have um, went harder, sprinted harder, but I should have sealed him right there. Uh, I should have sealed them up so I could have an open look. Yeah, and just I would just uh, say, I really like got the ball. Um, uh, I should have been patient. And I should have just like used my strength and my athleticism and uh, get like a dunk or like maybe an easier basket than just a hook shot. Yeah, maybe one pound dribble and just put it on his yeah. head. You know, you have that for sure. Uh, and, and then one other example of that here. I'm, you remember this one too? Yeah, I do. Um, just a similar concept. You know, uh, what would you do differently? This one, I should have been more aggressive. Uh, I should have actually sealed number zero, and I, I should have got the easy basket for um, a right hand finish. Um, I had a lot of options. Um, BJ could have spaced out for the wing, and I could have hit him on the pass. But actually, if you see Jaden over here in the corner, uh, Alo could have passed it to me, uh, Alex Lomax, and I could have passed to Jaden for a three. So it's like a lot of concepts that was going on in this one, one possession. For sure, and I think you're right about just – Going hard, and, and because if you see who's in the paint, right, that's Will Richardson, yeah. six five, Addison Patterson. Those are guys, I mean, one hard dribble, and, again, you can go through them. Uh, again, yeah. though, this I know you have that in your game, but tough shot, right? Um, yeah, being more aggressive. Yep, exactly. Aggressive. But I think, you know, as a rim runner, as a finisher, you're going to be able to add instant value, and then you're a beast on the offensive glass. I think you averaged seven and a half offensive rebounds per 40 minutes. Uh, I, I know you didn't play Duke, Kentucky, yeah. all them yet, but uh, still, I mean, I love the multiple efforts here. Um, you know, you're going after the ball, you eventually hit the deck, but then you don't give up, and, and you get right mm-hmm. back there, and, and you can see your length here. I mean, you barely have to jump to, to yeah. tip dunk that, you know. What's the key to being such a good offensive rebounder? The key to being a great off, uh, offensive rebounder is really just having time and then actually um, being self-aware. So being self-aware, like, who's around you, but also just make sure you just block out your man really hard and then once you do that, then you can most definitely get as many rebounds as you can. Just have that motor just to keep going and never stop. So. And that's what – I remember talking to you at, at the Jordan Brand game about this, after the Jordan Brand game, and yep. it seemed like that late stretch, uh, you know, Hoop Summit, Jordan Brand, um, even in your senior year, something clicked, and, and you were playing so much harder than I had seen in the past. And then we yep. saw some of that at Memphis. What was it that, that changed for you? Um, just actually, actually knowing my potential, what I can do on a defensive end, um, especially coming from like a rebounding uh, perspective, but also just like having that mentality to just be a dog and just never give up and just always have that uh, mentality just to keep going constantly. Yeah, and you can see that. You can see that on plays like this, you know, when it's, like I said, multiple efforts, using your length, and then drawing the foul. Um, you know, coaches, teammates, fans, they're going to absolutely love that out of you when you play with that motor. But like you said, I think it's your defense that can really make you a lot of money uh, and allow you to have a, a long, successful career. Uh, where are you at defensively, and, and how do you think uh, you've evolved you know, over the years on that end? Uh, how I evolved is that I watch a lot of film frequently, frequently every day, just like on um, players like Moses Malone, because I'm a very back in the day type big. Mm-hmm. Moses Malone, you got um, David Robinson, all these different players, Shaq Hakeem. So I really just watch a lot of film on them and just try to pick their um, game bits by bits. Who do you think are some of the best rim protectors um, that you've studied? Um, I say most definitely Hakeem, David Robinson, Shaq, um, different players like that, the Kimbe Bay So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got the, the finger wag or no? You need a you uh, need yeah. your own. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, you got that? Okay, there we go. Um, well, yeah, so, again, in, in the limited amount that we saw uh, at Memphis, you know, I think you blocked, like, over five shots per 40 minutes. And it seems like even going back and watching the McDonald's game, the Hoop Summit game, not the Hoop Summit game, but McDonald's, McDonald's scrimmage, uh, even some high school against Evan Mobley, you know, we have some of that game in here. And yeah. you've really improved uh, since then, I think. And so we're going to look at some of your clips here, some good, some bad. But this one, this is maybe a goal 10, but I just want you to see, like, where your head is at here, you know? 
I mean, you almost hit your chin on the rim, and with that reach, you know, you can really, really be a factor. I think like a, a defensive player type of the year type of candidate. Um, mm-hmm. The Hoop Summit game, you were phenomenal. It was maybe the best I've ever seen you play. Six blocks, I think, in 22 minutes. Uh, what do you remember about that game, and why do you think you were able to be so successful as a shot blocker? Just USA Basketball, we always um, was an advocate of playing your role. So just playing my role and making sure that I was being a rim protector and uh, really just playing my position. And that game, that's when I could see like a pivotal point in my defensive um, potential and just really realizing that. So just just making sure that I just get as many blocks as I can, but just making sure that uh, we got the dub that night. Yep, and, and you kind of volleyball spiked this on, on Precious here. Did you see, did you let him know about that? You say anything there? You're, you're kind of quiet on uh, the Hey, we talked about it in Memphis, and we had like a lot of competitive practices too. So, yeah, yeah. Yep, and, and again, six blocks in tw- just over 20 minutes. So what are you looking at here as you're, you know, eventually uh, about to rotate over? What are you kind of uh, – what's going through your mind? Just basically just watching the timing of it. Um, because I knew Isaac was going to come down and uh, guard my man. So what I did was I was just being self-aware. Uh, I knew he was getting to the basket. Um, Josh Green is a very athletic player. So I knew he was trying to finish. So I just went over there and just uh, made the play. And, yeah, and you can see great timing, great length, um, you know, quick off the floor. Similar situation here. Uh, how important is, is that timing and what's the key to it? Um, basically, it's all about the perception of the player. So uh, Colin Anthony was forcing them towards the middle, so I knew Josh Green is very athletic. He's going to get to the basket, so I was just right there to uh, make the play. For sure. And, and so much of it is timing, uh, playing angles, you know, staying on your feet. Here again in the Jordan Brand game against C.J. Walker. Uh, I mean, you're just really tough to finish over. Uh, now, what do you remember about this play? Um, this play? All right, so what I wanted to do was, like, Precious, man, was, like, I thought he was about to score. So I was trying to go over there for the block. But um, just leaving my feet too early, I should have stayed with Precious. And then he made the pass, and that's when I, uh, the foul was called. And then after that, yeah, I should have just um, been more patient. Yeah, one thing I'll say is I do think you have some room to get more steals also and just being active yeah. with your hands um, sure. because, you know, you have that length and, like, he shouldn't be able to make this pass even, you know. And then mm-hmm. he hits you with the head fake, uh, and that yeah. was, just, you know, obviously a tough start to, to, to a big game. But here you do yeah. a really good job of that. You're in perfect position to help on the baseline drive. You stay down, and you alter a lot of shots just with your length and with your reach. Now you mm-hmm. probably remember this. Yeah, I remember this play for sure. What happens here? Man, I got – he got me. <laughs> hey, great shot blockers. You know, if yeah. you're not getting posterized here and there, then then I don't think you, you belong in that great shot blocker yeah. category. Because, um, But I, I would say one thing, uh, just being consistent with your verticality, right, and, and, and yeah. always trying to stay straight up, straight up um, mm-hmm. because here maybe a little bit laid off the ground and then kind of pull back. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. what was that battle like with, with Evan? He's a projected <clears throat> potential number one pick. Um, I mean, he's a great player, a very young, but like basically has the same skill set that I have, uh, just very athletic skill, a uh, very long. So he's a great player. He's going to be a great player in the future, for sure. For sure. And again, we've seen you make great strides in this area because, you know, here in the McDonald's game even, um, do you remember yeah. this play? Yeah, I remember this play. What, what, um, what happened? What would you have done differently? Anthony Edwards going down the paint, uh, uh, well, coming out of the paint, I should have just really just walled up. Yep. And just use my length, but I didn't because my arms was down. So I should have been self-aware of that as well. For sure. And just a perfect, a perfect time to kind of, you know, get two feet on the ground and just explode <laughs> up. And I think Anthony yeah. Davis is probably one of the best in today's game uh, no. at, at verticality, blocking shots. Like, look at what he does here. Quick off the floor inside the circle. And you have similar measurements, you know, similar, similar mm-hmm. length. Uh, you move similarly on the floor. Um, so I think, you know, you can be elite in that area. And, here is a perfect example of that. What would take me through this play? <clears throat> um, this play, um, I should have been in the paint more because he was going towards the basketball. He was going towards Precious Man. And then I think he dumped it off to number 10, but I'm not sure. Oh, uh, yeah, right there, uh, that was um, – uh, it was almost great timing, but I should have been there. No, nah, I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. I, I don't think this should have been a foul, honestly. And I think this is really good yeah. verticality. Um, the pressure is going to kind of overhelp a little bit. You rotate, you're off two feet. I mean, that, that's a great block, man. That, that's a great block. It's great defense. One last thing on the rim protection side, you're going to be in a lot of these situations where it's like playing cat and mouse, right? Where it's like a two-on-one, yeah. you got to bluff and recover. Um, have, you, have you looked at that, studied that? Yeah, uh, I've been getting that ever since 11th grade here. 
uh, in high school. So I've been trying to focus on that, especially two on one. So just make sure that like I fake out, I fake out the point guards get to the basket or any type of player. But really, just make sure that I have the right time to be able to use my length to my advantage. And once I can do that, then I can most definitely master this um, position right here. Yeah, so, and that comes that comes with experience, right? <laughs> Being able yeah. to. Uh, no guy's tendencies and, and, and know what's going to uh, deter a ball handler. But again, I mean, you have the potential to be, you know, one of the best shot blockers in the NBA. And, you know, I think you're, on, you're certainly on that trajectory. Um, what about defending ball screen? So we're going to go through kind of, uh, you know, different coverages. What, how, how, would you, how would you rate yourself as a, as a pick and roll defender? Um, I would say really um, a B. Okay, yeah. Because it's like I can actually guard it, but it's like sometimes – like just being self-aware and actually like moving my feet more and actually like having a, a better motor that can get me to that uh, pedestal. But really, I feel like I can get better in that area for sure. Yeah, and I think we'll see here your progress. Some clips from earlier on in your career, and then you know some of you at Memphis like really covering ground impressively. Now I know this isn't all on you. So what happened here? You've probably seen this clip. Yeah. Um, so basically, we was trying to blitz it, but um, I called it out too early. But he was supposed to go the other way. But supposed to weak it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he actually faked Damon but went the other way, so it kind of, like, messed up the rotation. But um, I should have made sure that uh, I went up more. Uh, I should have blitzed him. Uh, we maybe could have got a steal in this play if I would have been more aggressive. And even when you see – so even if he's trying to weak him to his left, right, when you, when you see yeah. that, when you see him kind of get a step, just slide it over and be in position to contain the ball. Um, mm-hmm. But how could you make up for this? Precious could come up and guard uh, Peyton, and I can go down and uh, guard number 10 right there. Exactly. But it, I was just too slow to get there. Yep, and that that could be a pin off the glass. Um, yeah. But, again, that you know that's going to come in time and, and experience. Um, but mm-hmm. this is at the Hoop Summit, okay? So I want you to see – this is going to show kind of your progress here. Um, talk me through this. This, um, I should have called it out more for Jeremiah because uh, he was coming uh, on the left-hand side. And uh, I should have just uh, went up more. I should have blitzed up more. And uh, I should have made sure I was, uh, like, just being more aggressive on this play. Yeah, but, and uh, even just of, sitting down and being in position yeah. to keep the ball in front, I think, is the key. Because mm-hmm. you can see what you look like here when you are in position, right? Like, watch this. Yeah. Uh, great. You're up. You're active. Active hands. That's a tough yeah. shot for Cole Anthony. Air ball. Uh, and, and then here again against UIC, simple, you know, it's, you're not doing anything crazy, but you're in perfect yeah. position uh, to keep the ball contained. You get back to a hand contest. Uh, that's really mm-hmm. good, simple, basic defense. Do uh, you remember this play? Yeah, I remember this play. This is when um, Nico did kind of like a snake dribble. He kind of like got through um, really the screen, and then that's when he just split us. Uh, I should have just went over more. I should have been more uh, contained, and uh, I should have been closer to him so he wouldn't make that play. Yeah, and I think in these positions, it's about keeping the ball handler squared, and then yeah. if you got, you're going to have to play two guys eventually, right? So you're going to have to retreat, retreat, be active, uh, make them think, and make Nico, uh, you know, basically rely on making contested mid-range jumpers. You know, that's kind of yeah. what the NBA wants to force, and um, you know, you, you can definitely do that. But that's a great recovery, man. That's <laughs> I don't I don't know if that was a foul, but uh, and then again, kind of similar situation here, just being being able to use your length. Uh, to be able to bother these passes and, and kind of being in more of a position to, to take that away and, and recover. But that was earlier in your career, okay? And now if you look, if you look here against Oregon, um, this is perfect. Squared the ball up perfectly. Uh, you know, you're sitting down in a pretty good stance. And Chris Duarte, you know, eventually has to kill his dribble. And then here against Peyton Pritchard, you're giving yourself enough room to keep the ball contained. He kills it in a mid-range spot. Uh, it's really good, simple, effective defense. Um, and, and then here in the Jordan Brand game, what's maybe one thing you would have done differently here? Um, I should have came up more on Rocket because Rocket is like a very um, fast player. Like he's like he has great speed, so I should have just came up on the screen and uh, could have squared him up so he couldn't have got to the basket that easy. For sure, and I think the key is staying with the ball until the guard is back, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you can yeah. see here you do that perfectly. Okay, look uh, against SC State, you're with the ball. And then your guard says, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And then you get back to the big. Uh, and then look how far back you can, you can still drop and have an impact on the shooter. Yeah. Like, look at that. Just because of your length, it's really mm-hmm. impressive. Um, so, again, you, I think you made great strides as the year went along. Um, now, icing it in, in the, in the sideline. Uh, you yeah. remember this play at all? Yeah, I remember this play. What happens? Um, all right, so this play, like in Memphis, we emphasized ice a lot. 
and I was very effective um, in that type of defensive scheme. But back then, like in high school, I really didn't know about it that much, so I really didn't know like the two, like the true term, like terminology about it. But I should have just uh, came up more on cold and uh, forced him towards the baseline even more. And, yeah, yeah, and just keeping him in front. You know, I think that's the key. Just just making sure that you keep the ball in front. But like you said. Really good in these situations at Memphis. Yep. You know, you're active. Look at how you recover. Then you get to yep. contest. That's big time. That's big time defense. And then even here against Oregon, you're sitting down. You're in a stance. Uh, you're making sure that he can't beat you off the dribble. Look at your activity of your hands. That's perfect. Now what's the key as you recover back? Now it becomes kind of a scouting report game, right? Um, the key is really getting back to my man quickly. Mm-hmm. But uh, also making sure that I communicate. Mm-hmm. And uh, making sure that Damien is back on his man until I can be able to get back to the man. Well, get back to my man. And what what type of player was Shakur Justin? What's the scouting report on him? Um, he was a slasher. Yeah. He wasn't that good of a shooter, so I should have just made sure that I was able to contain him and just like get back and just yeah, just use my uh, left to my advantage. For sure, but even so, I mean, you can see you're a Jody there, and you know, playing hard covers up some mistakes, and you end up getting mm-hmm. the charge there. So. Uh, really, really good, uh, and you're still going to learn, you know, how these guys play and tendencies and all that. Uh, now, hedging ball screens probably won't do that as much in the NBA. Uh, but what's what's the key to a good hedge? A key to a good hedge is making sure you be in there before he even makes it, before he even makes that first step. So make sure you be there in time so you can get back to your man. But if you get there late, then it messes up the whole defensive scheme of the whole rotation of the whole team. So just make sure that you be there on time. For sure, and, and kind of giving one or two big slides, uh, you know, with, with your with your butt toward the sideline. Here, kind of beats you a little bit, yep. and then they get the three. Uh, but yep. l- look at how you recover, okay? Yep. I want you to see how much ground you cover here. Look at this. This is big time. You're everywhere. Ma- yep. Making them kill their dribble, taking them out of their flow. Same game. He has to kill it, and then you guys get the turnover. Uh, so the first thing about this is, like, playing in Memphis – Playing and like having that college experience, it's a lot of great players. So, me, I was just making sure that I just had my motor up all the time, especially in practice. I worked my butt off in practice, made sure that I was on every screen, made sure that I was there every time. So, when the game came, I was able to do all this stuff. So, for sure. And and if you go back and look at, uh, you know, great bigs, their first three games in college, guarding pick and roll. It's not always pretty, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that, yeah. It's a process for guys, right, to, to learn the nuances and, and the tendencies. And, and I think that you're a lot farther along than, you know, than, than people think. So probably still some areas to clean up, but, uh, again, some, some encouraging moments. So switching, okay, that's going to be uh, a huge part of the NBA, right? It's all about switching. Yeah. Uh, how do you think you fare in those situations? Making sure I use my left to my advantage and uh, not making sure that I get too close to a player, especially – a point guard uh, that has speed. So make sure that I just use my length and just back up and uh, contest in the shot. For sure. You remember this play? Yeah, yeah, I remember this play. What happens? Take me through it. Um, so he's a great shooter. So I knew that he was going to do like either one dribble pull up or two dribble pull up, or he was going to dribble the ball a lot because I um, did a lot of film on him before the game. So just make sure that I just uh, contain him and just use my length. But in this play right here, I wasn't using my length too good. So like it, like it gave him an advantage. For sure, and I still really like your activity here. You know, you're moving your feet, active hands, uh, you know, maybe get him with the hand check there. But even yeah. so, I mean, that's a tough finish for anybody. You know, anytime you yeah. got to finish over a 7-6 wingspan uh, as a guard, um, you know, I think that's a fairly job well, a job well done. And then here, just showing kind of your versatility. You can switch on to the point guard, get back to the big fella, and then give me that. Uh, you know, yeah. it's good, good timing, impressive length. I would say that the last step is just being able to do that against a Cole Anthony, a Russell Westbrook, uh, you know, some of these speedy point guards in the NBA. Uh, take me through this this possession here. You remember this? Yeah, this play, um, at first I was using my length, but I should have um, not been stagnant. I should have just uh, used my uh, my footwork more because I'm a very agile big, so I just made sure that I was uh, getting there just a little quicker. For sure. And maybe uh, giving more of a slide, you know, than kind yeah. of a, you see, you're already turned and you're running, uh, which yeah. I think is helpful in a lot of situations, but it makes it tough to stop and recover like that, right? Uh, so, yeah, but also, but also just like forcing the player towards, towards um, training, just like make sure I force him baseline because yeah. he could, yeah, he shouldn't have got the opportunity. So, for sure, keep him out of the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. And again, Cole, very talented player, talented scorer. You're going to, 
you know, face a lot of guys like that uh, sure. at the next level. But you certainly have the agility, the foot speed to do it. Uh, and kind of winding down here on the defensive side, uh, one-on-one defense. So we're talking some perimeter, some mid-post, some post. Uh, what do you remember about this play? Um, this play, um, he went to his right hand, went to his strong hand, and that he attacked me. I should have just made sure that I used my strength. And uh, I could have basically, like, put pressure up on him and, and I put my leverage up on him so he couldn't have got the easy shot. For sure. And maybe a scouting report thing. You know, he's a hard yeah. right-hand driver uh, and kind mm-hmm. of just catches you upright and get, gets to the front of the rim. But, uh, again, as you kind of went throughout the season and, and learned more and more, I mean, this is big time. Sliding your feet, staying down. Mm-hmm. Get out of here. You know, you're, you're going to be tough for anybody to finish over, and then this is almost perfect defense. Yeah. Sitting down, sliding. Uh, what do you, what do you like about this play? Um, basically, just force him towards Lance because Lance is a very um, great rim protector. So I just force him towards my player. Well, really towards my teammate, and just uh, make sure that uh, both of us get that block and just make it a hard shot. For sure. And then against Isaiah Stewart, so you guys have had some battles throughout the years, oh, all yeah. all different settings. We've seen it. Uh, what is he like to, to go against, and what do you remember about some of these battles? Uh, he's a great player. He actually made me better uh, on the defensive end. Just guarding him, he's a very strong player, so make sure that I can be able to play against strong players and um, I'll be able to hold my ground and just be smart as well. Make sure I use my lips to my advantage. And here's that play we kind of showed a little bit earlier, I think. You do a nice uh-huh. job for the most part of staying down, maybe bite a little bit there, but strong, long, uh, and you're doing a nice job kind of pushing him off his spots here, and I want you to just see the length. Uh, the, the impact that your length has, you know, you're yeah. really, really tough to finish over. So if you stay down and your timing is good, you know, not a lot of guys are going to be able to finish over you. Um, yeah. Who do you think, who are you looking forward to guarding most in the NBA? Uh, I say Joel and B for sure. And uh, potentially probably Giannis. That's going to be a great experience. So I can't wait for that. What, what, how would you guard and beat? Um, just making sure that I use my agility really against him because he's a very strong physical player, so make sure I use my agility and I'll be able to front him as much as I can because yep. you know, he's a very big player, so yeah, just make sure I do that. For sure, and it's it's coming soon right around the corner. I'm sure you'll have plenty yep. of battles. Um, defensive glass, how do you think you are as a defensive rebounder? I feel that I'm a very great defensive rebounder. I feel that uh, that's going to be a great impact like really on my game. And I feel that if I just keep having the motor, same motor that I got right now, then I can be able to um, be a great defensive rebounder for sure. Yeah, I've, I've been really impressed with your progress as a defensive rebounder. You know, clearly one of the best in the draft. You, you do a really good job of finding a body uh, and yep. getting low on box outs. Um, who, who, anyone you study in that regard, or uh, w- what do you think are just the keys to being, you know, such an effective defensive rebounder? Just making sure that you have self-awareness and also making sure that you have a motor and just being a dog under there. I feel that it's a lot of great, like a lot of physical players, so make sure that you just have that motor and just uh, being tough down there. It's all about toughness at the end of the day, especially being a rebound, a great rebound. For sure, and you can see, okay, you find the hit here, find a body, and then just look at your rebounding radius, and that's ridiculous. You know, mm-hmm. you, you can get to a lot of balls outside of your area because of that. And then here, putting a body on the big fella, Kofi Cockburn. Yeah. He's strong. What does he like to guard? Bro, the dude is a brute. <laughs> right? He's a man. Yeah. Man, I was able to use my strength and uh, just try to box him out. So Yeah, you did a really good job in that game overall, I thought. Uh, one thing maybe is, you know, just pursuing. Not always being as worried about finding the body. But sometimes, I know this is an air ball, but sometimes you can just go get it, you know. Uh, yeah. Running that back a little bit. Sometimes, you know, just track the ball with your eyes and... And go get that thing. But in general, I, I think you're a tremendous defensive rebounder. And I love this, okay? This mm-hmm. hit. Go hit somebody, you know? I love that. Yeah. Coaches are going to love that physicality, man. And that's somewhere you've really improved. And this is not a rebound, okay? But on that note, uh, teams yeah. like a little bit of nasty in their bigs, okay? Yeah. Uh, do you remember this? You and C.J. Walker getting into it? Oh, yeah. I remember this play. This play was... What happens here? Hilarious because uh, we were just being physical towards each other, have like both of us have a great competitive nature, so uh, we just got a little uh, twined up and <laughs> we just started having a little bit of conversations. But you weren't always that way. I mean, <laughs> you, you've always been pretty quiet on the court. Uh, yeah. Do you ha- do you think that it's important to be like loud and or, or or can you be yourself while still having toughness? Um, I have such a great passion for the game of basketball, and like I love it so much. I look at it. I actually just study every day. Um, I actually watched full games from 1985. So, really, like, it's all about the competitive nature, and I just love it so much that sometimes uh, I just love getting a little competitive. So, 
Uh, I mean, that's part of the game, though. Oh, it's great. I think teams love seeing this. And, and, and there are a lot of guys who came into the league who maybe weren't the most vocal or weren't the most physical initially. Like Rudy Gobert was not that way. And now he's one of the best shot blockers in the NBA. Uh, so defensively, I, like I said, I think as you continue to progress, you have a chance to be you know, one of the best defensive bigs in the league. Now, yep. this is the fun stuff, okay? I made you wait for the fun stuff. Uh, but <laughs> I, I think well, a big part of what makes you intriguing is you can, you can be a, an effective rim runner, lob catcher, shot blocker, all that. But you have a little of this skill also. Um, yeah. Where do you think you're at skill-wise, and, and what do you realistically see yourself being able to kind of use in the NBA? Uh, I see myself being a very versatile player. Like once I get started, just keep you know, discovering my offensive potential. I feel that like I could be able to do a lot of things on the floor, especially on the um, on the offensive end that I rarely showed in uh, high school, like putting the ball on the floor and uh, being like that point center. So just making sure that I'm just working on my ball handling, just all aspects of my game every day. And we've seen glimpses of that from, from all yeah. over the floor. You seem really comfortable in the mid-post. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, anyone you really look to? or Like, where does this come from? Um, KG, for sure. I look at a lot of film of KG. So just um, seeing, like, his post phase and uh, seeing how he um, used his perception just to look at different angles on the floor. And a lot of Tim Duncan, too, to make sure that I just um, focus on that end. It's just, but like my mid-post game has always been my strength, so just make sure I use that to my advantage, too. So what do you make of, because you have like your LaMarcus Aldridge's and, and those type of bigs who are super effective in those areas, but then you'll also hear the, oh, it's a league of threes and dunks. Uh, where do you think that your game fits into all that? Really just being, being, being able to do all of that. But I feel that my strength is really um, in the paint, so I just make sure that I get those easy buckets and like, just don't make the game harder myself than what it really is. So just making the game easy for myself. Sure, but we've seen. I mean, we've seen some of this, right? With the with the step back. What, what, mm-hmm. What's the, what's the key to this? Um, I mean, I've been working uh, on this a lot, and I always had it, but I just never showed it. But uh, I'm very capable of doing that. But just studying a lot of film and just um, watching the footwork of my um, defender, and just make sure that I just capitalize off of that. And we saw it in the hoop summit too. You know, we've seen yeah. you make those kind of those mid post step backs quite a bit. Uh, so mm-hmm. now they have to honor your jumper, right? So, so what do you do here? Um, since they honor my jumper, they think that uh, I might shoot it again. So just get into the basket and make sure that I attack hard and, and finish. And that's perfect. An aggressive yeah. rip through right into the body of Isaiah Stewart. That's a big yeah. time play, man. Playing with strength, playing with physicality. Now, I do think sometimes you can live off some tough ones. Would you agree with that? Yes, truly agree. I so, truly agree. so how do you how do you find that balance? This one, um, like in college, it was a lot of experience because uh, I was going against a lot of physical players on a college level, so it really made me want to be more aggressive. So, but like in high school, I used to capitalize off the jump shot too much, but I've learned a lot. So, like, like really just make sure that I get to my strength a lot and finding my uh, finding my other teammates too because it's a lot of open areas on the court. For sure. And, and how do you feel going to your right? It, it, it seems like you've shown glimpses there. Uh, how do you feel in terms of right right hand versus left hand right now? Uh, I'm feeling great because I'm working on my right hand hook and stuff like this. So I'm working on my right hand more than my left. So I'm actually getting better at that area too. And here you show that against Kofi uh, with the right hand running hook. That's a big yeah. time move. Um, so then as we're winding down here, back to the basket game, okay? Uh, yeah. I know you're, you're comfortable with the face up, uh, but... I mean, you're a load when, when you really want to be. Uh, what yeah. do you what? Talk me through this play. So during the college, we used to have all these type of um, training and stuff during the summer. So we used to work on our strength, my upper body, my lower body. So like, as, like I got stronger by the weeks and days, and saw my improvement in my body. So it's like this stuff right here that I was struggling in high school, um, but it's making it easy now because I got stronger. For so sure. right here was a great um, post base, and I was able to get that and finish. So. And the footwork, too. You hold them off, really decisive and aggressive. I mean, that's big time. Uh, still, sometimes maybe when you can hold your spot a little longer, uh, they yeah. probably could have hit you earlier here, but yeah. he ends up fighting around. But in general, I mean, you're really, really tough to guard in the post. Even when they push you off, like look at this, right shoulder, deep range. Um, yeah. who, who do you watch for jump hooks? Who's got some of the best jump hooks? Um, Hakeem for sure. Yeah, and I watch a lot of Kareem as well. So I watch a lot of old players, old bigs. That's great. I- I'm sure they would uh, they would appreciate that that vintage style. Uh, but even when you get pushed off your spots, I mean, you have that touch from deep. Now this is 
this is a tough cover also, okay? This this back shoulder um, turnaround. W- yeah. w- when, at what point do you know you're going to that, and how do you set it up? Um, so basically, uh, he was on my right side, so I knew that my left side was open, So and I know that I'm capable of making that shot, so I just made that. And uh, I just was thinking about that before I even got the ball, and I just made that play. That's why it was so fluid and so smooth on how I did it. I mean, that's beautiful. That's that's really impressive. Touch, footwork, all of it. And then, kind of like we said before, just, you know, maybe not living off some of these as much, but uh, yeah, that's, in, that's in high school. So, do you think you'll have that, that Dirk, though, eventually? Yeah, I have that, but I just got to stick to my strengths right now. So, I'm just make sure that I just get easy bats. Year three, year four, maybe you'll tap into that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, okay, and then, and then kind of winding down here, on top of that, I think part of your intrigue is that you can shoot the ball, and, mm-hmm. and you've shown uh, glimpses of that. Where are you at right now as a shooter, and do you think it's realistic to expect that you can make NBA threes in your career at what point? For sure. I'm, I'm very capable of making shots like that. I just work on my game every day. Uh, I shoot like 300, 500 shots a, um, a day when I work out, so I'm really just getting better. But I feel that um, I can space the floor a lot, and I can be that type of big to where I can stretch the floor out and make those shots. And we see it here in the mid-range. Uh, great balance, great touch, uh, you know, mm-hmm. almost picture-perfect mechanics. And then here, Isaiah Mobley giving you some space, whack yeah. right in his face. Uh, and then now, they got to close out hard to you, right? Yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> yeah, I saw your eyes light up there, man. What? So we, we made you wait on this one, but what happens here? <laughs> Uh, this play, I was just going hard to my right because the like, it, like if you could see, it was that little scene that was open, so I took advantage of it, used my length, and I finished over top. And with authority, and you can yeah. see the whole package there: your agility, <laughs> your length, and we're gonna give you the uh, the replay here. Even I think, yep, <laughs> bang, that's big time, man. So again, that agility, that explosiveness, uh, not a lot of guys your size who can do that. And then you had this as well. You remember this? Man, the floor was slippery, and I was off balance. <laughs> so I almost fell, but I made sure I, I just maintained my stability. Uh, I used my spin move, and I just got to the basket and finished. Where does that agility come from? Did you play any other sports growing up? Yeah, I, I played football and baseball. I was a pitcher. Okay. But, um, like, when I was younger, I used to always go outside and just run miles and miles around my neighborhood. So, really, I've always had that kind of knack of just having that agility um, at my size. Yeah, it's really, really impressive. And then the last part we're going to touch on, okay, an area where <laughs> – I think you have room to improve, but you show us some glimpses here and there. Uh, where are you at as, as a passer, and, and what are the keys to continuing to evolve there? The keys of passing is uh, the angles and making sure that I have the right awareness. So making sure I know where my teammates are and just putting them in positions to succeed due to my um, play. So just making sure that uh, really self-perception, just uh, self-awareness is really the key to being a great passer. And what do you remember about this play? Um, this play uh, was the jump shot. Uh, I was thinking about passing it to DJ for the lob, but uh, I feel that I was very capable of knocking down that shot. And who? So you guys are kind of scrambling back. Um, yep. Any any opportunities you see here? A lot of opportunities. Um, so you got you, you really can't see him. DJ is very athletic, but you got Lester for the shot right there. Lester is a great shooter, so that corner shot was most definitely the pass. Yeah, that's the that's the one read I would say is if you can you know hit Lester Lester on that quick swing, um, and then maybe you guys are, are back in it. But uh, so just kind of finding the balance between being aggressive and and creating for others, uh, and then here another play out of the post. Uh, what do you see yeah. here? This um, I see the dive to the basket. Or that's like a dump off right there. Mm-hmm. Or uh, you have Matthew Hurt that can space the floor uh, in the corner. So uh, it's like a lot of options uh, out of that as well. For sure, and, and who is that cutting? That's uh, Jerome or Jeremiah Robinson Earl, I think. Yeah, Jeremiah. Along the baseline, so maybe it's mm-hmm. just a little handoff. Um, yeah. And you know, just be, being being patient with it, but also uh, finding the right opportunities. But again, I, we've seen more glimpses than I, I think people think. Uh, what are you looking at here? Right here, um, Khalil Whitney down to the basket, which was smart. But um, also, I feel that like if Matthew Hurt would have stayed, then that would have been a shot as well. But you have like. Uh, Khalil Whitney for the layup, and you have Matthew Hart in the corner, and then you have Nico. So it's like three options right there. Yeah, and I, when you catch in the post, always looking opposite, I think, is yeah. is huge, especially if you're going to face double teams. Um, mm-hmm. And that's perfect. You know, right in his shot pocket, you know, that should be an assist. So really, really heady, simple pass. Uh, and then take me through this play. What are you looking at here? Right here, Keon Brooks could have spaced out uh, for the shot, 
But I feel that Khalil Whitney, like, if he would have sealed in C.J. Walker, then that would have been a pass. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mm -hmm. I was trying to look for uh, my uh, my teammates for sure. Yeah, and this is impressive, you know, the little little drop-off pass. And you could kind of feel that that double team, you know, coming from from your backside, Wendell Moore. Uh, Really, really nice. You know, simple, effective basketball. Uh, And and then kind of the last – Few clips here. One big thing I'll say that you, that you're going to be in these situations, these short roll situations, right? Yeah. Because you're so effective as a dive man, and you can space it a little bit. Uh, you're going to be in these situations a lot. You're almost yeah. the second point guard in, in some ways, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because yeah, you're going to sure. have these four on three situations where it's going to come down to your IQ and your feel. Um, yeah. So what do you see here? So um, in this play, uh, I feel that uh, right here was the pass to Boogie mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, like if I just would have been a little bit more patient, then Boogie was the pass for sure. But like it's like in the study film, like when, like after this game when we was um, at practice and we was studying film, um, if Boogie would have like relocated to the corner uh-huh. a little bit more, then that would have been even a better shot. Yep. No, I think you're right. And taller, and, taller for the corner shot right there. And you and you you eventually draw the foul. I mean, and, and you're a load to the rim, so I don't blame you there. I just think that's a good example of a situation you'll be in in the NBA where yeah. you're going to have, you know, maybe it's Steph, maybe it's Clay, who knows, out in the corners that that you that you can find, you know. Yeah. Uh, so sure. continuing to improve those areas of your game, I think, are important. But again, we can, we've seen it in space, we've seen it in glimpses here, hitting that weak side corner. Uh, yeah. You know, in transition, I mean, that's a big time pass. So um, that's kind of the full 360 view, uh, you know, of your game. Yeah. And like, how would you describe James Wiseman? Um, I feel there's a lot of misconceptions. I can actually put the ball on the floor. Um, I have a lot of confidence in my skill set, but I just feel that I just, I just got to keep working hard every day. But like, the misconception is that I can actually dribble the ball and pass, and my pass is um, getting better. And um, my offensive game is getting better as well. So. Yeah. And the one thing, the level, I'll let you go here, but do you speak Mandarin? Everyone always says, yeah. how did that? Yeah. How does a, a kid from, from Memphis speak Mandarin? So uh, I went to a private school my life in right here um, in Nashville, Tennessee, my hometown. So I've been learning um, about Chinese for two years, so I've been studying that, so I'm pretty fluid at it. There you go. Well, you're multi-talented, yeah. man. That's, uh, that's impressive. But, uh, no, James, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to – Sit down and, and talk hoop, and you obviously have an extremely bright future. So, uh, you know, best of luck throughout the rest of the pre-draft process, and, you know, looking forward to hearing your name called on draft night. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.